Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jamie and today I'm going to be presenting uh, the music scene in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So my first impressions on Chapel Hill is that it's a really small collegiate town um, built by college kids for college kids. Um, but all the venues are really close knit uh, and the scene is actually pretty influential in the eastern US. Um, and it's just not a lot of local names that have come out of uh, Chapel Hill. People like James Taylor, the Squirrel Nut Zippers, and Ben Folds 5 all got their start here. Um, yeah, so Ben Folds 5, um, <laughs> self-described as being a punk rock for sissies, um, is an alt-rock trio from Chapel Hill, um, originally founded by Ben Folds, its namesake. Um, and his, a little bit on him, he actually started in New York City and drifted down to Nashville for a little while um, and played some gigs there before settling in Chapel Hill. Um, once there, he formed this trio, and eventually they got signed to a record deal um, and released Whatever and Ever Amen and Naked Baby Pictures as a follow-up. And this should be their song, Brick, that I'm going to play for you. The smell of cold, car seat is freezing, the world is sleeping, I am. A little quote by Ben um, about the band is, we've always stretched and we've always done things that feel like the great unknown. I think that's really important to feel like you're breaking your own rules. When you look at the course of our albums, we've always done that. Um, and that's 100% that's true. Um, the band took a little hiatus uh, after their opening album and then came back even stronger. Uh, the next band I want to talk to you about is the <laughs> Squirrel Nut Zippers, um, self-described as an alternative to alternative. Basically, they're a 1930s era kind of swing jazz big band group um, founded by married couple Jimbo Mathis and Catherine Whalen. Um, <laughs> and funny story about the name, actually. Um, there is a candy called Nut Zippers by a company called Squirrel, and that was Mathis' favorite candy. And so when he was first going on dates with his wife, um, they wanted to form a band. And so she asked, oh, what should the name be? And he replied, oh, my favorite candy, nut zippers. <laughs> so uh, that's, yeah, that's how that happened. Um, and eventually they played some local shows and were signed with uh, Mammoth Records. Um, their first album did okay, but their sophomore album, Hot, really put them uh, on the map. It, um, it placed in the Billboard Top 100. And just to get an idea of their sound, here's uh, one of their singles, Put a Lid on It. What's that you say? Oh man, no way. It's, it's pretty obvious to tell since they're a 1930s jazz band, but um, Whalen on record said that, quote, we're drawn to old things, not to polish them up, but to make them accessible. We want our values to show every time our old fashioned notions of love and music. If this experience stops being about that, something I'm sure would make it fly apart. So basically, they just, they're not in it to popularize old music. They just want it to be known um, to this next generation. Now, the last person I want to talk to you about is James Taylor. Um, he's really just an icon when it comes to songwriting and music in general. Um, he was originally from the North, but moved down to Chapel Hill when he was three. Um, and both his parents were really musical. And uh, by age 12, he'd picked up guitar, even after learning cello. <laughs> um, eventually, after a short stint with heroin and other narcotics, he checked himself into a psychiatric hospital. Um, at the age of 19. And really there is when he found his love for songwriting. Um, he had a lot of free time, so he really ended up honing his skills um, at the hospital. Um, he was eventually signed to a record deal, and uh, his first album did okay, but his sophomore album, Sweet Baby James, really boosted him into popularity. Um, You've Got a Friend, originally by Carole King, 
um, you know, you've got a friend in me from Toy Story, um, that topped or peaked at number three, uh, one of the two on the Billboard charts, and one of his other most popular songs, uh, Fire and Rain, uh, this is it. I've seen fire and I've seen rain I've seen sunny days that I thought would never end I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend But I always thought that I'd see you again Alright, well, eventually he, after a few more albums, um, in a massive popularity swing, he released James Taylor's Greatest Hits, which is just a compilation of all the best stuff that he worked on and he's done. Um, it actually went certified diamond. And because of his success, he was eventually inducted in, into the Songwriters and Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2000. Um, so a little bit of background on the scene in Chapel Hill. Um, originally there was nothing there. Uh, it was just the University of North Carolina. Um, but Chapel Hill was founded and built around it with interest to the college. So it was built for the college students that lived there. Um, which includes massive population swings. Um, and the college also really heavily influences the culture in the town. Um, including the music scene. Uh, the music scene was actually... It, was, it started off really, really small, but the University School of Music helped popularize that. Um, <clears throat> so all the genres and everything that you see now are a product of the people at the school. Um, like I said, it started off really small, but James Taylor eventually, with his success and everything, um, popularized the, uh, the whole town. And it really reached its peak around the 1980s and 90s with... Um, with the, the heavy rock swing into popularity. Um, and it's actually on the decline right now, which I'll, I'll talk about in a second. But uh, A few popular genres. Um, Alt-rock is very, very big. Um, most bands that play live gigs are alt-rock. Uh, and pop. Pop is also really big there as well. Um, but there is, however, a really small indie rock community um, that's, that's steadily growing in country, being from North Carolina, it's always there, and it always will be there. Um, sustainability is somewhat of a problem. Um, because of the genre shifts, um, it's having a hard time adjusting. Uh, with the popularization of hip-hop and rap and everything like that, it's... Um, it's kind of struggling with its alt rock influences and country and everything like that, even if it's on a college campus. Um, but there are a few venues that are staying true to everything, um, such as Cat's Cradle. Um, it's a really mainstream venue. It's your typical big um, just college town stage. Um, it's hosted people like John Mayer, and Nirvana, and a bunch of other widely famous artists throughout the years. Um, another one is The Cave. Uh, it was first opened up in 1967 by a man by the name of Lefty. Um, and it's really, it's described as being uh, just as shady as its origin story. But it's a really intimate experience. Um, it's all underground. And it actually, unlike the Cat's Cradle, it doesn't cater to what students want. Um, most of the shows are earlier rather than later, and um, no covers are allowed there, actually, which is I thought was a really interesting thing. Um, and then there's the School of Music in UNC. Um, and so because of this and because of the college town and all the people constantly moving to the scene, it will um, continue to grow and it will continue to change because of... Uh, all the new influences and everything. And in conclusion, uh, Chapel Hill was built by students, for students. Um, the music scene started off really small, but James Taylor really, really helped bring it out uh, of nothing. Um, and in the future, it will be 
sustained by students, even if it falls in popularity because of the rap and hip hop phase that society is going through right now. Um, and it even still helps influence music culture in the Eastern U.S. because of the country and the alt rock and even the small indie scene. So yeah, that's about it. Thanks.